What's up guys, Ken and Andy here and today we are having like two episodes in one which is a review of this uh, Mavic Cosmic Elite uh, Road kind of arrow wheel set and in addition to that I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks uh, on how to buy used wheel sets um, in order to save money and not to buy a trash so uh, let's just do this the first thing is that uh, in my opinion it's really worthy uh, to buy uh, used wheels why because uh, when you are buying bike uh, up to let's say thousand dollars or even much more uh, usually uh, those bikes won't have cool wheels won't have very good wheels because wheels are very expensive and can be as expensive as very good uh, bike road bike or, or a mountain bike for example, uh, I bought my Canada Cat 10, which I love, and I'm always <laughs> saying that, telling that to you to you. But um, the wheels Shimano RS11 on this uh, um, bike is just—I won't say rubbish, but these are not very good. Uh, good, and those don't fit to the performance uh, and quality of the frame set. Uh, that's why uh, when you buy a bike. You, you will quite soon start to think about upgrading the bike with the wheels. And the wheels is very important upgrade of the bike because in my opinion, let's say some like mid-level quality frame set with cool wheels will behave better than some very cool frame on like poor quality wheel set. Uh, so today Mavic Cosmic Elite, these are quite, quite cheap, uh, let's say around what? Four hundred dollars, something, um, something around it. Uh, I like these Mavic Cosmic Elite and also Fulcrum Racing Quattro, which are which are also like a budget aero wheels um, and just enough to upgrade your bike, like uh, for the for the look and also for just a little bit for the uh, aerodynamics. First thing I want to know about the um, uh, the wheels is some information about the um, the model. So when I'm when I was buying this uh, used uh, wheel set Mavic Cosmic Elite, what I wanted to know is the width of the rim. The external width is here 20 millimeters. Uh, you won't see it anyway. Then the internal uh, rim width, which is uh, like. 15 almost 15 millimeters uh, you want to know those diameters in order to to know what kind of tires uh, you'll be able to fit into those uh, rims then of course the rim profile which is 32 or 31 and a half let's say 32 millimeters uh, for these wheels so these are just you know between like um, just standard profile and the aero profile which is understandable because these are budget wheels there is no carbon there is no like super light materials or super um, butting of those materials so the the lower profile the lighter the wheel set is mavic say uh, this wheel set should weigh around 1770 grams on my scale it's just above 1800 grams so it's okay uh, the wheels look very cool uh, and have this 32 millimeters uh, profile um, another thing I want to know about the model I'm buying is uh, what kind of bearings um, the model has. This one has of course the cartridge bearings um, double sealed so no problem with these. Uh, that's why when I'm, when I'm buying a new one I'll be, I'll be able to check whether these are quite, uh, whether these uh, work quite smooth and if you have to replace those it doesn't cost that much money. So it's, it's not the problem when I'm buying used uh, Mavic wheels with these um, bearings. Another thing is uh, I would like to know whether this uh, rim has any type, any kind of wear indicator. Uh, it can be some groove, it can be some little hole. Uh, these, this model doesn't have it so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to use any kind of indicator uh, to check um, um, how much, how many kilometers uh, the wheels uh, have already gone through and very important thing for the rear wheel is to know what kind of free hub it has of course Shimano or Campagnolo uh, specific but also what kind of technology is used for these wheels and as we know for Mavic uh, maybe especially for for road wheels but not only uh, the downside of this is that they would quite often get some play on the free hub 
so that's something that you should know. This is very typical for, for Mavic and, and that's it. All right, so um, these wheels are nice. I like those. And when we buy those, what should we be looking at? One of the first thing will be, of course, the uh, braking surface. The braking surface uh, will tell us uh, how many kilometers or miles those will have already uh, on them. Um, most of the aluminum um, rims uh, with the aluminum braking surface will have some kind of groove and you can hear it. And by this groove here on these uh, Mavic wheels I can tell that tho those won't have more like hundred or a few hundreds of kilometers, not more than a few hundred of kilometers, that's for sure. So I'm happy with this one. Another thing is also to take, now how is it called, how is this measuring tool called? Tell me please. Anyway, uh, bear with me in my English, I'm gonna really be improving. Um, when you use this one and you see whether there is any distance between the, this tool and the rim, you can see whether the, the surface of, the, bre uh, of uh, the, the braking surface is just flat and when it's flat it means the wheels are in very good shape. That's the case here. Uh, I'm not sure whether you see it or not but uh, I can see that there is no like U shape or V shape or any kind of shape because um, uh, braking pads they, they don't wear down a whole braking surface. They will take like uh, maybe maybe 90 or 80 percent of this uh, surface so um, when you are wearing down the rim by braking then you will see after some thousands of kilometers for sure that the, the rim uh, is just uh, uh, worn down uh, so that's the important thing uh, if you're buying wheels online you don't have to see those wheels you just ask the seller to do to make this photo for you and it will be very very clear on um, how how much uh, used these wheels uh, were all right next thing it will be of course to check the bearings they should just work pretty smooth uh, and that's the case here but if you're able to spin the axle and the axle will still spin a little bit giving some noise like zzz, zzz, that will mean it can really work very smooth, but that will mean that the bearings are already dry. There is no lubri lubrication or any grease or anything. Uh, and that can be problem. That can cause problems because uh, sometimes when you start um, cleaning those uh, uh, dry uh, bearings, they will work even worse. So just bear that in mind. If, if they are completely dry, uh, sometimes greasing will be enough. Sometimes you will have to replace those. But just remember what I said before, uh, these bearings aren't very expensive. You don't have to buy them from Mavic, but those are, are not expensive, so it's not uh, a big deal here. For the free hub here, I can tell you that there is, uh, there is no uh, play whatsoever on this one, meaning very few miles. It fits to the condition of the uh, braking surface. Another thing is also to check uh, on how the poles are locking uh, on the um, on the free hub, uh, sometimes uh, you can feel that some poles will, will just skip. Uh, this uh, free hub has two poles; they never skip. They lock very nicely on this one, so very good condition on the free hub. Uh, if you were to replace the free hub or um, or um, just buy any parts, uh, spare parts for this, that could be very expensive for Mavic. So uh, that's the part I'm gonna. I want to be sure it works very well and if you buy online ask the seller uh, about this one. Um, some people, let's just use the front wheel in order to show you that. Some people will tell you that if you spin the wheel, uh, the wheel should stop with the uh, valve hole on the 12 o'clock. Like here, we have a valve here, uh, this, that's the valve here. I'm gonna just let the valve, the, the wheel spin. And in this case, it will really stop on 12 o'clock. Even if I spin the wheel, the wheel will stop with the uh, valve hole on 12 o'clock. And some people say that's the indicator of uh, very good bearings and not so many kilometers done on, uh, on these wheels. Sometimes, because um, 
Different manufacturers will try to, uh, um, to make those, those wheels uh, work very smoothly, um, giving some weight against uh, not only the valve hole, but the valve itself. They would measure how, how much the valve weighs and give some additional way, uh, weight on the rim, uh, on the opposite side. So that's one thing. Another thing is also that some uh, manufacturers, when they drill the hole, they would also give some additional material strengthening uh, this part of the rim and then it's no longer lighter. That would compensate for the hole actually. So it doesn't have to stop with the valve hole on the 12 o'clock. It's, it's not that uh, important. Of course, another thing that we should check is whether the wheel is true, right? So we are checking it just like that and as you can see it's 100% uh, true. Uh, now uh, I'm gonna tell you what I would be worried about and what I wouldn't be worried. I, would be, I wouldn't be worried if there was some let's say one two millimeters uh, side plate from side to side. So if the wheel would on some place go just a bit to the side, just I'm um, exa exaggerating it, it of course, I wouldn't be worried about it so much, but uh, if the wheel goes up and down, in my opinion, and that's from just my perspective, uh, that can mean that um, the wheel went through some potholes or some rough terrains uh, and it will be quite difficult to true the wheel that is uh, working like this up and down. Another thing also, if um, it has those one or two millimeters uh, movement or play to the side but um, more more often many times not only just once but many times like this that would mean for me that the, the wheel was very untrue and someone was trying to true the wheel making the wheel really working just like that and I wouldn't be so happy uh, buying these wheels uh, in order to be even more sure or to check it even better you want to check uh, the um, uh, tension of the spokes and I'm going to show you that on my uh, poor unfortunately wheel uh, on the killer because I'm still looking for my uh, for Mavic Crossmax for V-brakes I haven't found I have two for the front wheel but still in the rear we have you know what we have we have STXRC hubs so this one is very old but also the nipples they don't hold they would just unscrew and uh, the wheel goes uh, out of uh, true. How do we check the tension of the spokes? It's quite easy, you can do it just like that. Bearing in mind that those spokes on the drive side will, be, uh, will have much higher tension uh, than the spokes on the left side uh, because these are longer. The, there is the cassette on the right side and I can show you like here I can see there is not so much tension on these two spokes as on these two spokes. And that happens when uh, the wheel was out of true and we are trying to true the wheel. Sometimes we won't be able uh, to get back to the even um, tension on all the spokes. Um, the next thing that correlates to, to the um, uh, spokes tension is also checking the material uh, of the rim just uh, around the uh, nipple hole. Uh, because when I feel that some of the spokes is very very tight that would be the very first place to check on the rim because the rim will start crack quite often. I would do it both on the uh, outside and on the inside of the rim. It's good to take the tape off and check um, how it works. For, for example for Mavic uh, Crossmax SLR, the mountain bike wheels, um, one of the places I would be I would want to check for sure is also the, the valve hole around because uh, when you put the tire and, you, and, you, and the tire presses against the, the side walls of the rim, uh, this place can also crack just around the valve hole. Uh, so by knowing all those uh, places, uh, if you know what you're looking for, you'll be able to uh, check the wheel very well. So if you're buying online, just ask the picture of uh, the valve hole. Uh, just uh, make sure you wanna you wanna ask for any cracks uh, on the rims. You know uh, that the um, braking surface is okay. That's fine. If the tension of the spokes is even, that's absolutely 
fine. Just a little bit of uh, of um, side movement is uh, is okay in my opinion, and you you would rather be able to uh, through that wheel nicely. Uh, one of the last things is also to check the quick releases. If you get with the wheels, the original quick releases, and maybe even the the tools that came with the with the package with the wheel set. Um, then it means that you are buying from the first owner and that's fine. If you don't have original quick releases, if uh, the buyer doesn't have any tools, uh, it means that uh, he's probably not the first uh, owner and maybe he wasn't also, he hasn't been maintaining the wheels as uh, he should be if he doesn't have any tools for, for these. Uh, one thing that uh, I saw on these wheels, but it's n not a problem here, is some scratches on the surface here. You can see it here. It doesn't look nice, uh, but these came in, in my opinion, when you put those wheels into your car, one wheel on another, then those scratches uh, come here very, very easily. Of course, if it's a mountain bike wheel, those scratches can also be caused by some rocks hitting the wheel. The rocks can hit the rim here, uh, but those usually won't be able to damage the rim, the structure of the rim. Uh, usually those would be only the optical damages. I think that's it for the Mavic Cosmic Elite wheels and how to buy used pair of wheels. Let us know in the comments. Uh, what is your opinion about buying used wheels? Uh, maybe you have had some experience with that. I'll be glad to talk with you uh, about this. Thanks for watching. Once more, thank you for your support, guys, and I'll be seeing you very soon. Bye bye.